Have you ever gotten on the bus or transit, whatever it might be, and wondered, man, why does that person over there have such bad etiquette? If you haven't, then you're probably one of these people, and you should listen to my list. If you don't know what a courtesy seat is, then clearly, if you ride the bus, you don't pay attention. Like say you're sitting in the front of the bus, like you'll be looking at another person. If you look behind them, on the window, it typically says that these seats are reserved for the elderly and people of disability. There are as many times when I have been on the bus and you see a blind person get on the bus or an old person who has trouble moving, a lot of times you'll just see people and they just stay in that seat. Dude, it says it right there. And on top of that, like, it's just common courtesy. That's why it's called the courtesy seat. Everything about it is just bad because you look bad if you stay there. You are bad if you stay there. Let me just, let's just face it. You are a bad person if you stay in the courtesy seat. If you're on your seat, and you sit on the aisle, let's just say, and then you put your bag like next to you, you're a seat hog. If you sit at the window and put your, your bag on the aisle seat, you're a seat hogger. This is an issue on buses. As we all know, nobody likes to talk to anybody on the bus. You're gonna, you know, you sit down and you just, you think only about yourself. This was something I had to get over a long time ago because I realized if you seat hog, that means more people are gonna have to be in the aisle, like standing. That's just gonna get the bus crowded and then less people can be on the bus. And once you're trying to get off the bus, you get upset because it's like, oh, why are these people standing in front of me? Well, maybe if you would have just shared your seat, then not as many people, the bus wouldn't look as full if you just, you know, would scoot over. Typically there's like a plaque at the front of the bus and there might be like signs on the bus. The no food, no drink, no alcoholic beverages, no smoking, and that includes e-cigarettes. The thing with food is that food gets everywhere. Like there's crumbs, people leave their, their garbage. Um, they leave like food on, on there and it gets stale and like the bus driver doesn't have like time throughout the day to like clean the seats. And, like by the end of the day, like it's stanky. With drinks, it's a similar situation. Somebody had spilled their soda. It doesn't just stay in one spot. So there, like there's nothing worse than getting on the bus, starting to walk to the back and then your feet just get stuck to the ground because somebody spilled the soda. Alcohol, you shouldn't be drinking alcohol in most public places like that anyways. Like it's law. Um, pu public intoxication and all that. Cigarettes, you can't, you're not allowed to smoke a cigarette on there. And this includes e-cigarettes because here's the thing. I know that people, they, they have their different, they, they have their stand on, on how they feel on e-cigarettes. Oh, well, I should be able to smoke an e-cigarette because um, it's not as harmful as a cigarette. And it's the alternative to smoking. But at the same time, there are people on the bus who they might not like it anyways because they don't want, you know, they don't want your um, atomizer scent or vape or whatever it is. They still don't want to be around that. And also on top of it, there hasn't been enough research done yet on e-cigarettes just because the, the sensation of them hasn't been around long enough to have the appropriate data to tell us whether or not they're safe or not. So you you saying that, oh, it's safer than a cigarette. Like, you don't know that yet. We don't know that. It could turn out like in 20, 30 years, it could turn out that like e-cigarettes are worse for you than a regular cigarette. We just don't know yet. And until we know, they're gonna be banned from places like the bus and restaurants and schools and et cetera, et cetera. And you as a human being, who needs to follow rules. I know we all have our little anarchic ways about us, but 
you still need to use common decency and that includes not smoking any cigarettes on a bus. Music is a way of life. Music is a way to unwind. I know this as good as anybody. Whenever I'm on the bus, if I don't have music on, the bus drive just feels a lot longer and I hate it. So I, I get it, I get it. You wanna to listen to your music. But the thing is, first of all, part of that sign with the like no food and drink is like no music. What it means is like no loud music, no music without ear, earbuds or earphones. Um, on top of that, if if it is too loud, even with the headphones on, and it distracts the bus driver and he has to stop the bus to tell you to turn down the music because you know you're you he can't you can't see him or whatever. So he actually actually causes the bus driver to stop the bus. Don't throw a hissy fit, okay? It's just it's a rule. Phone etiquette on buses kind of states, like on my local transit website, if you're gonna talk on your cell phone, to keep it at a soft voice and try to keep it short. My personal opinion of this is you should only answer the phone if it's an emergency. There is nothing that sh you need to say to somebody on, your, on the phone it can just wait. A lot of people, they air their personal problems on a bus and it gets loud. I mean, that's the thing right there. It, the bus, my bus thing, I already says, like, keep it at low levels. When people talk about personal BS on the bus, it gets loud quickly. People come off as fools. A woman's on the bus and she's, she's talking on the phone and she's like, Why'd you hang up on me? Man, you don't even know me anymore. I've been clean for two weeks. What do you know? She gets off the phone and she looks at her sister and she's like, man, I hope that uh, guy's name is at his house right now. And I hope he's got some weed. It's like, okay. I mean... You know, everybody on the bus, they just want to get home. They just want to, you know, get from point A to point B with the least amount of whatever. And, you know, having to hear about people's personal issues when you're probably never going to see the person again. It's, it's just frustrating. Sometimes you'll get on the bus and you will notice like two or three people maybe uh, just standing. You know, that happens sometimes. But on some occasions, this happens when there's still seats open. And this can cause a problem because uh, other people who are getting on the bus, they'll see this. They'll see, like, you know, a couple people standing already, and it's like, oh, okay, there's no open seats. So they'll stand too. Don't do that. If you're on the bus and there's an open seat, take it. If there are no seats open and you have to stand, which I get it, it happens, go to the back of the bus. Don't like walk part way, get in the middle, or even stand up in the front because this just blocks traffic. Go to the back of the bus. That way, if more people come on who need to, to get on the bus, hopefully, if they have good bus etiquette, they'll go to the back of the bus too. People get this like idea about them that because it's not theirs, they don't have to take care of it. You've been that person before. If you if you're a bus, if if you've been on the bus, you've been that person who has gotten on a bus and there's trash there, and you're like, well, that sucks, and, and it is a mood killer. Don't be that guy. Don't be the guy that leaves trash on the bus. I mean, is there really anything else you have to say about that one? I mean, really. Thank you for watching this video. I am Will of WDS Nation. If you like this video and would like to see others, 
subscribe up here. And uh, if you want to watch another video before you do so, uh, you can click right here.